Well, all right. What's up, North Star? How are y'all doing today? All right, good. Hey, man, got some applause. Like you guys are, you guys are feeling frisky this morning. That's awesome. Hey, listen, uh, my name is Lee. I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and uh, I get the privilege of closing this bad boy down today. All right, this is the last Sunday that we're going to be meeting at Mosley High School. That's right. It's yeah, we're all looking forward to, uh, you know, next week and being able to be in our newly renovated space. And so we're excited about that. We do want to say thank you to uh, Mosley and all the administration and the teachers and staff and everybody that had to ha- put up with us for the last several years. Yeah, we're thankful for you guys. We really, uh, we really appreciate that. And uh, you know what? It's been good. I mean, it's been like the last, it's almost been four years, guys. I mean, I know you know that, but like it's almost been four years and the last four years have been tough. Uh, they've been difficult. But you know what? Uh, when you look around, they've also been good. Uh, because one thing that's really stood out through this whole time is this. That the church is not about a building, uh, but it's about people. You know, like in the same way that a house doesn't make a home, um, you know, a, a building doesn't make a church. It's about the people. And so uh, we're excited that we get to get into a new building and, and we get to turn a page you know, I know some of you are still there. You're still working through all the stuff personally. But just it's exciting when, as a community, we get to see something come back together. And we all get to, you know, be excited about that and start to see, like, a little piece of our community coming back together. And so uh, we're excited about that. We get to, you know, flip the page. And we get to turn to a new page. But it's not a new page, like something completely different. We're going back to what we have always done. We want to we wanna think about just returning to what North Star was really founded on at the very beginning. And you know what? Over the past four years, we've gotten a little, you know, focused on, you know, different things as it's just been like for all of us, you know, for the past four years, it's just been put your head down and push, you know, just grind, just get from one, you know, week to the next or one day to the next. We've been kind of, you know, gotten into some bad habits and secondary issues and stuff like that. But we want to come back and we want to say, you know what? We get to flip the page. Let's go back and let's see what it's all about. Why do we do what we do as a church? And then in the same way, we want to talk about why do we do what we do as followers of Jesus? Because here's the thing, guys. This church, North Star, is only going to be as healthy as each of you who say that you are followers of Jesus are healthy. Um, This church, we're supposed to be about three things, and it's the same three things that you as individual followers of Jesus are to be about. And so what we're to do is, as individuals, we're to be following Jesus, pursuing these purposes he's got for us, and then when we do that, God, our lives are going to be healthy, and our church is going to be healthy. There's no way that we're going to see the love, the peace, the joy, you know, the purpose that God has for us if we're not following the plans and the purposes he has for us. So we want to talk about those this morning. So we want to talk about three things. They're not original things. Uh, you know, they're not like, like, I'm not about to say three things, and you're like, I've never thought of that before. Like, there's coffee mugs and T-shirts and bumper stickers and, like, all kinds of stuff that have these same three things on them. But just because they're familiar doesn't mean that they aren't powerful. They're important because these are the three things. We didn't just pull them out. We didn't like get together as a staff and go like, hey, what are the three things y'all want to do? We went back and we said, okay, God, what is it that you want us to do as your people? And it's these three things. It's love God, it's love others, and it's make disciples. Those are the three things that God said that we as individual followers of Jesus and we collectively gathered together as his family, the church, we are to be about. And so we want to talk about them a little bit this morning. Like I said, we didn't pick these, we didn't make them up. In fact, um, Jesus himself is going to tell us what these three things are. Um, There's a couple of different times in his uh, life and ministry when people came to him and they said, Jesus, what's the most important thing to do? And it's funny, a lot of times they were coming trying to trap him. So, uh, in fact, the passage we're looking at today, uh, there was a religious leader who came, and he was trying to, like, catch Jesus. He was trying to trap him. And so he asked him in Matthew chapter 22, he said, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two 
commandments. So what Jesus is saying there is this. Basically, the Old Testament, what we would know as the Old Testament, it was the scriptures that they had you know, for Jesus. They, he was looking back and he said, all of the Old Testament, all the law, all the prophets, it basically comes down to two important things. Love God and love people. And he said, all those other commands that you have, those are like pegs. And he says, all the other commands that you find there, they're all hung off of those pegs. So it's all about loving God and it's all about loving God others. So what does it mean to love God? Do we just get to, uh, you know, determine what we think love, you know, should be like? Well, no, we, we need to look and we need to say, God, what do you think love is? And he says in 1 John 5, John writes to us and he says this, loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. So what is it that God expects of us? What does God want from us? How do we express love to God? Well, we do that through simple, loving obedience. Simple, loving obedience. So let's talk about that a little bit. Simple. The commands of God, really, they're really pretty simple. Most of the time, if you're honest with yourself, when you go to a situation, you really know what probably the right thing to do is. As you're reading through the scriptures, you usually know, like, here is something that I could do that would be the right thing for me to do based on what it says here. It's usually simple. Now, you go, no, 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 it's usually complex. No, it's only complex because you go, after I take that simple step, then what will be the next step and the next step and the next step? Like, what's it going to look like, you know, as it all plays out? And, you know, like five years from now, if I take that one step, what's it all going to look like? What all am I going to have to do? Where all am I going to be? How am I going to get the money for it? How's it all going to work out? What are they going to want from me? We start getting complex then. But usually it starts pretty simple. God says, you know, I've got this one simple step for you to take. He said that there in 1 John. He said, you know, they're not burdensome. They're not hard. They're not complex. I mean, they might be difficult. I'm not saying it's always going to be easy to follow Jesus or take those next, next steps. But it shouldn't be, like, it shouldn't be exhausting. You know, guys, like, I mean, if you're following Jesus and it just feels exhausting, it just feels like a burden or like a weight, then you're doing it wrong. Okay, because Jesus is the one who said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and and learn from me because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What he's talking about is that, you know, when you have a yoke, it's a, you know, a piece of wood that links two oxen together. And so what he's saying is, I got my half. I want you to put it on your shoulders as well, and you take your half, and then we're going to walk together. And you're never going to take a step alone. You're never going to do anything by yourself. Everything that you do, you're taking one step with me, and then the next step we're going to take together, and we're going to keep in step with the Spirit. And every step you take, the Holy Spirit is going to be helping you to take those steps and do whatever it is that I've asked you to do. Right? So it should be simple. It should be simple. It should be loving as well. He said that, you know, loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. We love God by keeping his commandments, but it's not about duty or obligation. Okay? See, like, I mean, I grew up, you know, in the South. I know how it works. Um, You know, I, I, this is some of the stuff that I heard. I don't know that it's what the, the church has taught, but it is what I heard. It's how I received it. And, uh, and what I felt like was that I had to obey God so that God would love me. Actually, that's not even exactly right. Here's what I grew up thinking. I have to obey God so God won't be mad at me. That's what I thought. But some of you, maybe you think, I need to obey God so that God will love me. That's not true at all. That is completely false. You do not have to obey God for God to love you. God loves you. Like right now, God loves you. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter what's going on in your heart, God, like God loves you. God created you and God loves you as you are right where you are. God doesn't love some future version of you, like where you get all of your junk together and you get all cleaned up and polished up and you look nice and shiny and, and you know, you smell good and all that kind of stuff and God's like, now, you know what, now I love you. No, God loves you right now in the middle of the mess that you're in. You know, some of you may be here and you're like, I don't, you know, I don't even follow Jesus. I'm just doing my own thing. I know. Jesus loves you right where you're at. Jesus loves you. 
Some of you, you know, you're, you're followers of Jesus, but you know what? You got that stuff that you got hidden away. Like you got that stuff that's going on in your life and you're like, ain't nobody knows about all this. And, uh, and I got to make sure nobody finds out because if anybody finds out, there's no way that they would love me or that God would love me. I don't know about them, but I do know about God and God already knows about it and God already loves you. And so what we're talking about when we talk about loving obedience is that it's based on the fact that God already loves you And so then as an expression of your love for God, then you obey. You're not obeying so that God will love you. You're obeying because he already does. Right? So it's simple obedience. It's loving obedience. And then finally, it's obeying obedience. Right? Simple loving obedience. He says there that loving God means keeping his commandments. Notice he didn't say loving God means knowing his commandments. See, that's another way that, you know, the... the, the, well, I, I, since I grew up in the South, I call it the Southern Gospel. You know, like kind of the Bible Belt kind of idea about what Jesus did for us. Another way that it gets distorted is we think it's just about knowing what Jesus wants us to know. Right? As if, like, i got to accept just enough of Jesus so that when I die, I get to go to heaven and I don't have to go to hell. Right? And then the way that plays out usually is, like, I get to live like hell all my life and then I get to heaven when I die. Now, I want to stop and, and just say, uh, first off... Um, that's not what the Bible teaches. But second of all, I want you to think about this. That doesn't even logically make sense. Okay, and and let me explain to you what I mean by that. If what you want is you just want to make some decision, you know, like, I mean, you know, you know how it works. It's like, man, when I was little, I like, you know, prayed a prayer, I walked an aisle, I got baptized, whatever. But then ever since then, I just kind of do whatever I want. Like, and your goal is just to keep God as far out of your life as you can so that you can just kind of do your own thing and live your own way and accomplish your own stuff. What you're saying is, God, I don't want you involved in my life. And then here's the reality. When you get to heaven, you know what heaven's all about? Heaven's about the fact that God is going to be living with us. He's going to be walking with us. He's going to be talking with us. Like, he's going to be living with us. It's all about God. I mean, it's all God all the time. 24-7, you know, like, he's the sun, he's the moon, he's all of it. It's all about him, right? And so if all of our life we've been like, you know, I don't want God, are you even going to want heaven? Because it's about wanting God. It's not about wanting to, to escape punishment. I mean, I get it, like, hell's bad, I don't want to be there either, I want to escape the punishment. But more than that, you know what, I want God. Because when I understand who he is, and I understand how much he loves me, and I understand how gracious he's been to me, and I understand the mercy that he's poured out in my life, and I see the way he's protected me, and he's provided for me, and he's walked with me, and he's helped me, like, I want to know him more. Like, I want more of him, and I obey, because the more I obey, the more I know about him. And the more I I obey, the more I get to experience him. And I want to know God more, and so that's why I obey him. I obey him because I love him, and I want to know him better. And so he says there, we're to love God. That's what we're, we're to be about. And guys, I know I sound like a, uh, a broken record, you know, like I'm like, you know, I like, you know, I just got, I got like one, you know, one song that I can play. That's, that's really about it. But, um, and this is it. If there's one thing that you could do that would help fuel your love for God, it would be this. That you spend time with him every day. And so uh, I've taught about this a couple of different times. You can go back and you can find those. Or, you know, you can email me. You can catch me in the, in the lobby, whatever. I'd be happy to talk to you more about this. But I've, I've, I've put in your notes there how you can spend time with God every day. And I'd encourage you to do that. To just take some simple steps and kind of walk through and hear from God as he speaks to you himself through the Bible. If you've got questions about it, man, I'd love to help you with it. Anybody on staff, we would love to talk to you more about it. Because there is nothing more uh, that, would, that would be more helpful in your walk with Jesus than beginning to read the Bible and hearing the Spirit speak to you through it every single day. So we want to love God. Maybe you want to love God by beginning to take that step and say, you know what, I don't know how it all works, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to read the Bible. I'm going to try to hear what God has to say to me today. You know, and you're going to try to take that step. Love God. Here's the second thing. He says the second thing is we're to love others like Jesus. We're to love others like Jesus. i got to be honest. Of these three things, this is the one I struggle with the most. Right? And so uh, since I struggle with it, I don't have to do it. Right? I mean, that's, that, that, that's not true, but that's how we work. Right? We look at it and we go like, which of these do I like? Actually, I don't like any of them. Let me just chuck them and, you know. Like, do my own thing. No. All three of these things, there's going to be stuff that you struggle with. You know what? I, I, I enjoy um, drawing close to God, loving, love, you know, learning more about him. I like that. 
I enjoy teaching others about that. I enjoy making disciples. Loving others has always been a challenge for me. And so one of the things I feel like God's really been teaching me in my time here at North Star has been to love other people, like to, to learn to love others. I struggle with it, and I don't think I'm alone. Right? Here's why I don't think I'm alone, because at another time when one of these guys came to Jesus and he said, teacher, what do you think is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, what do you think? And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, that's right. Go and do that and you will live. And the guy said, hold up. And he said he wanted to justify himself. You, wanted to, you know what he wanted to justify himself about? He said, who is my neighbor he wanted to justify himself in terms of loving others. What he was thinking is, you know, I got a few people I love, people that I like, people in my family, people I got to love, whatever people, you know. But I don't want to just have to love anybody. So Jesus told him a story. And he told him a story and he said, you know what? There was a man, he was going from Jerusalem to Jericho, two cities there. And he said he was on the way and some robbers came down. They mugged him, they beat him, they stripped him, they stole everything from him. And they left him laying on the side of the road, left him for dead. And he said, right after that, a pastor came walking down the street. You know, it was actually a priest, but, uh, you know, for us, it'd be like a pastor. Pastor's walking down the street. He looks up, he sees the guy in the ditch, and he goes, you know what? I think I'm going to go to the other side of the street. I'm just going to stroll down the other side of the street. I mean, you know how that works, right? You've been downtown. You've been walking down the sidewalk, and you look up, you see a homeless person up ahead of you, and you're like, oh, man, I don't even want to have to deal with that today. So you just cross the street, you walk down the other side of the street. That's what he did. He just completely blew past the guy. So then a staff member came up, right? A church staff member, one of the Levites, people in charge of taking care of all the things in the temple. Um, that he came walking up, and he saw the guy, and he did the same thing. Detoured the other side of the road, and he just kept going. And then Jesus said, a Samaritan came by. And now a Samaritan would have been the most hated people you know, for, for Jews. They did not like each other at all. So he said, the Samaritan come come, comes down. He gets off his donkey. He gets down. He takes care of the man. He binds up his wounds. He takes care of him. He puts him on his donkey. He takes him to the next city. He puts him in the inn. And he says, here's some money for his wounds. Take care of him. I'm going to go. i got something to do. And, but when I come back, give him anything he needs. And when I come back, I'll take care of it. I'll pay for it all. And Jesus looked at the man and he said, which one of these you know, was his, loved the most. And he said, well, the one that showed him mercy. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. And, and, and this story, it helps me in all the areas where I struggle, right? Because the reason I struggle with loving others is, quite honestly, I mean, like, can I just be transparent with you for a minute? Like, I mean, is this like a safe place? I mean, it's not, but, I mean, it's a church, like, but it's supposed to be a safe place, right? And so, uh, but, yeah, it's a safe place, right? Here's, here's where I struggle with loving people. It's risky. You know, you, you don't ever know how it's going to turn out, you know? Uh, and so this guy, he's walking down, this guy's mugged, and this, the dude on the donkey obviously had some money, the Samaritan, but he gets off his donkey, he stops, and he puts himself at risk. He could have been mugged as well. It's risky. You don't know what's going to happen. You, you, you never know. It's actually kind of thrilling, too, because you never know what's going to happen, right? It's, it's, yeah, I guess that's my adrenaline. Some of you like to do stupid stuff like jump out of airplanes. I just like to take other risks with people I don't know. Anyway, uh, so it's risky, right? It, it, it's risky. It's, you know what? Here's another thing, though. It's, it's inconvenient. You know what? I have never yet had anyone call me with a need or present some issue that they, had, they needed help with, that they were like, could you work this into your schedule for me? They were like, help! You know, or they're just laying there all busted up in the ditch, and it's like, i got to do something right now. It's not convenient. And, and you know, the, the Samaritan, he had something else to do. It says that he went somewhere else. He said, I'll be back. He obviously had somewhere to go, but he stops, and he inconvenienced himself, and he messed up his agenda to stop and take care of this man. It's, it's, it's inconvenient. You know what? It requires that you get your hands dirty. Like you don't get to love people from a distance. If you're going to love people, it means that you have to get into their life. It means you have to get your hands dirty. And I mean, this guy got off the donkey. It says he was binding up his wounds. He was washing his wounds. He was cleaning his wounds. I mean, you know, he's getting dirt and blood and God knows what else all over him. He's getting his hands like literally dirty. And it takes getting involved in people's lives, getting your hands dirty. It's, it's costly. It's costly. It's going to cost you money. And you know what? Money's probably the easiest thing it's going to cost you. Like, it's really easy to throw money at a problem and just keep moving. But it's also going to cost you your time. It's going to cost you emotional energy as you get to know somebody and as you get invested in their life. It's like, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be draining. It's going to be tiring. It's going to cost you something to love other people. 
And you know what else? It's also not going to end up, you know, tying itself up usually in a nice, neat little package and being finished. It's usually open-ended. You never know exactly where it's going to stop or how long it's going to go. Because, you know, the man, he, he left him at the end. He said, here, let me take care of his upfront bills, and I've got to go somewhere, and I'm going to come back later. And if he needs something else, you give it to him, and I'll pay for it later. But here's the thing, guys. You go like, well, this isn't really motivating to make me want to do this. And I get that. But I'm just being honest. Like, these are the things that we have to struggle with. But we want to do it. And you know why we want to do it? Because Jesus said this. He said uh, in uh, John 13. He said, so now I am giving you a new commandment to love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. And get this. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Your love for one another will prove that you are my disciples. How's the world going to know that what we're saying about Jesus is true? It's not going to be about our Facebook status. It's not going to be about the sticker we got on our bumper. It's not going to be about the shirts we wear. It's not going to be about the things that we say. It's going to be about the way that we love God others and the way we love others when we love others they're going to look and they're going to go you know what that's not normal something supernatural something abnormal had to happen in their life and that was jesus when we love others people look and they notice and they say you know what jesus is real and they are really his disciples because of the way that they love one another so we're going to love god uh, well, you know, actually, before we get to that third point, um, I want to give you a way to, to, to get involved there. Um, if you want to get involved in loving others and, and, and do that with some other people, you know, it's, it's usually best to do that with other people, a group of people. It's, it's more enjoyable that way usually. But listen, here's some ways that we do that here at North Star. We have a care team. And so, like, we would love for you to join the care team. Here's some things that the care team does. They have different teams that, that do different things. Uh, but there's, like, a meal team. And so when somebody has, you know, had surgery or had a baby or they're sick or there's been a funeral or something like that, they'll provide food for them. So if you like to cook um, or if you don't like to cook, if you just like to buy gift cards, that'll work too, right? You can be a part of the meal team and you can sign up to do that. We've got a prayer team that's part of the care team. They, they are praying for people. You know, on your connection card, you can write in a prayer request anytime that you want. And when you do that, we get an email every week. It comes to the staff, and it goes to our prayer team, and they're praying for you every week. If you like to pray for people, then sign up. We'd love for you to have a, uh, a, a spot on that team. Or how about this? Do you like to go and you like to see people that are, you know, struggling? Maybe they're in a nursing home or they're in a hospital or something like that. And you like to just go and talk with them and spend time with them and kind of make their, their time there a little more meaningful and help it pass a little more quickly? Then we have a visitation team where we have people that will go, and they'll, they'll talk with people, and they'll care for them and their needs. And so you can sign up for that with, by, by writing care team on your connection card. Or listen, maybe, you know, so, so some of you, that's not really your cup of tea. What you like to do is you like to get out, you like to, you know, use power tools, and you like to, you know, beat on wood, or you like to cut stuff up, or whatever, you know. So if you like to do light construction or yard work, uh, we got the 516 Project. And every second Saturday, they're going out and doing projects in the community. They're also doing more projects in between, but every second Saturday, they're doing that. So, like, if you'd like to be a part of any of that, if you'll write CARE on your connection card, then we'll make sure that we get in touch with you, figure out which of those teams you want to be on, and get you the information about how to do that. All right, because we want to be we want to be a church. We want to be people that love each other, because that's going to demonstrate that we're Jesus' disciples. Here's the third thing. So Jesus said, "Love God, love others." And then the third thing it comes from as Jesus was getting ready to ascend back to heaven. It says that he gathered all of his you know followers together on this mountain, and he began to talk to them. And he said this in verse 18 of Matthew 28. Jesus came and he told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Right? So listen, Jesus said, I have all of the authority, all of the power, everything in this universe. And so I'm going to, based on that, based on all of this authority I've got, I'm going to tell you something. And so he says to them, therefore, because I've got all this authority, therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this, 
I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So Jesus comes and he says this, that we are to teach others how to love God and love others. Do you get that? Here's what's gotta happen. You as an individual, like we've all been called to love God, love others, and make disciples. So you as an individual, you're, you're to love God. And you know what? As you learn to love God, you know what you're supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be teaching somebody else what you've learned. Doesn't mean you've got to teach them everything there is to know about it, because I don't even know everything there is to know about loving God. Nobody does, right? But the things that I have learned, I need to be able to pass on to other people, to teach them to love God in the ways that I've learned to love God. I want to help them along in that process. As, to, to love others. As I love others, even as, you know, as I make mistakes and I stumble forward and I'm working through it and all that kind of stuff, then I'm teaching other people how they can love others as well. And, and you know what? I'm responsible to be teaching other people. You go, well, well, not me. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. You know, I'm just a, a dude. You know, just a lady. I just, I just, you know, do whatever. I got my job and I do it. No? Let me tell you something. Are you, are you a parent? If you're a parent here this morning, you know what? You have children and your responsibility is to teach them to love God and to love others. You're going to be teaching them. Are you a grandparent? You know what? You're supposed to be teaching your grandkids, probably your kids too, how to love God and love others, right? Maybe you've got to teach your kids how to love their children, you know? Like, here you're like, no, listen, you have to love them uh, because, you know, like, that way people know that you love Jesus, right? So, yeah, like, you've got you to teach them. You've got people that are in your life that are watching you. Can I tell you a secret? If you claim to be a follower of Jesus, you are discipling everybody that knows you. Everybody that knows you, they're watching you and they're going like, this is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Does that make anybody squirm? Right? I mean, I think about that. It's kind of like, you know when you got kids? Have you ever said something or heard your kids say something inappropriate? And you were like, how dare you say that? And then you get in the car and you're like, I'm sorry, daddy said it. Don't ever say it again. You know, like, you're like, you know where they learned it from, right? Like, it's kind of like that. When you talk about making disciples, you're like, I mean, they're going to they're gonna reproduce exactly what they see. So guys, listen, you are discipling the people that are around you if you're a Christian. What you want to do is disciple them well. I mean, it's not a question of if you are. It's a question of if you're doing a good job or a bad job of it, right? Are you showing people what it looks like to love God and love others? A good, a good job. Well, you know what? We want to we wanna be encouraging each other. We want to be helping each other. That's what the church is about, that we're encouraging one another toward love and good works, to, to be good disciples who then can make disciples. Paul said it this way. Paul said this. He said, um, imitate me. He said, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. So here's the way that it really works. There's Jesus, and I'm following Jesus, and then I turn around to somebody else and I go like, let, let me show you the steps that I'm taking to follow Jesus so that you can follow Jesus too. Right? And they are imitating me just as I am trying to imitate Jesus. That's what discipleship is all about. And guys, listen, that's what we want to be about. And so if you want help in doing that, I get it. If you're like, man, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I don't know if I'm doing a good job or a bad job. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, if you want some help with that, we would love to help with that. If you'll write disciple on your connection card, then I'll get in touch with you this week and we'll talk to you about like where you're at and how we can help you take some steps and, and we'll walk with you. You know, like I would love to walk with you and teach you what this looks like in your life. But guys, we want to be doing these three things. We want to be returning to this because this is the heart of God and guys, it's been the heart of North Star all these years. And there's been lives that have been changed and transformed because this is the heart of North Star. And as we flip a page to, you know, a new story in our history, we want it to be based on the same three things of loving God, loving others, and making disciples. And we want you to be a part of that. You are a vital part of that. It, it will not happen if you are not engaged in doing that. And so let me close this morning by praying with you and, and just commissioning you to do these things in your life. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for calling us to follow you. Thank you for giving us everything that we need to follow you. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is coming, that he's filling us, and that he is walking with us every step. We're never alone. 
We never take a step by ourselves. We are never left to our own devices or to figure it out on our own. But we have your very presence living inside of us. God, would you fill each person here in this room with your spirit so that they could hear your voice and that they could have the courage and the faith and the boldness to obey you and take whatever the next step is you put on their heart. And God, would you go before them? Would you prepare the way so that they can walk into the works that you are already doing this week? We love you, God. We're so grateful for your love and your mercy and your grace that you've poured out on us all of these years. And God, we want to experience more of it. So God, would you help us with that? We love you, Father, and we want you to be glorified in everything we say and do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this. Amen.